Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing a rare tumor, subependymoma. Outline of today's talk includes introduction, clinical features, imaging findings of subependymoma and its differential diagnosis, macroscopic and microscopic findings, immunoprofile, genetic profile, and prognosis. Coming to introduction, subependymoma is a glioma characterized by clustering of uniform to mildly pleomorphic tumorous nuclei in an abundant fibrillary matrix prone to microcystic change. This tumor corresponds to CNS WHO grade 1. Localization, fourth ventricle is the most common site and it accounts for almost 50 to 60 percent of cases. 30 to 35 percent of cases occur in the lateral ventricle, followed by third ventricle. Now, the cases in the spinal cord are rare, and these arise as eccentric masses in the cervicothoracic segment. Epidemiology these are rare tumors and account approximately for 8 percent of ependymal tumors and less than 1 percent of the intracranial neoplasm. The peak incidence is in the adults. Age group ranges from 40 to 84 years and it shows slightly male predominance. Coming to clinical features, these patients are often asymptomatic and the tumor is discovered only incidentally on neuroimaging for some unrelated reasons or at the time of autopsy. Symptomatic intracranial cases are associated with ventricular obstruction, raised ICT, and occasionally intratumoral or intraventricular bleed or hemorrhage. Intramedullary tumors manifest as sensory motor deficits indicative of myelopathy. Coming to the etiology, examples have been well documented in the monozygotic twins associated with trichorhinophalangeal syndrome type 1 and germline TRPS1 mutation. So let's have a look at our case. Now, this is a 69 year old man who presented with headache, blurred vision, and MRI revealed. A supratentorial intraventricular space occupying lesion within the frontal horn of the lateral ventricle, which measured 4.3 into 3.3 into 2.5 centimeters. The mass appears dumbbell shaped in configuration with foramen of Monroe, third ventricle, and anterior horn of left lateral ventricular components. The T2 weighted images appear mildly hyperintense and T1 appear hypointense. So coming to imaging findings of subependymoma, these are sharply demarcated lobular non-enhancing intraventricular mass, uh, which is hypo to iso intense on T1 and hyper intense on T2 weighted images. Some ependymomas exhibit calcification, cystic change, hemorrhage, foci of contrast enhancement may be seen. These are typically 1 to 2 centimeters in size and they may enlarge to grow as much as more than 5 centimeters. And those larger in size appear symptomatic. Coming to the differential diagnosis on imaging. Uh, the first is ependymoma, which is commonly found in younger patients. Uh, ependymoma is a heterogeneously enhancing mass with edema. It is typically found in the fourth ventricle uh, with hydrocephalus and uh, often parenchymal component may be present when it is uh, supratentorial. The second DD is the central neurocytoma. The common age group in this central neurocytoma is 20 to 40 years and these are typically bubbly appearance or the soap bubble appearance and calcification is commonly found. The location is a lateral ventricle 
and central neurocytomas are attached to the septum pellucidum and they show moderate to strong enhancement. The next uh, differential diagnosis on imaging is the sub ependymal giant cell astrocytoma sega. Now this is an enhancing mass at foramen of Monroe. Calcifications are commonly found and these patients uh, may have other features of tuberous sclerosis such as sub ependymal nodules, corticular, uh, cortical tubercles and white matter lesions. The next DD is the choroid plexus papilloma. Now, this is common in the pediatric tumors. Lateral ventricle is commonly affected when it comes to the adults. The fourth, uh, it is found in the fourth ventricle. And these are enhancing papillary masses with uh, hydrocephalus. Next is the metastasis. Uh, primary is oftenly known. Now, these are uh, these may also show multiple lesions at the gray white junctions and typically involve choroid plexus when the tumor is intraventricular and a remote uh, possibility of a cavernous malformation should also be taken into consideration. So this is what we uh, received in lab. Now uh, the tumor measured almost 3.5 into 2.5 into 2 centimeters. This tumor was operated by uh, Dr. Harish Chandrappa from Shimoga, Karnataka and he sent this tumor to us. Uh, now, uh, the, uh, this tumor, subependymoma, is firm, gray and circumscribed and uh, it may bulge in, ex, uh, in exophytic fashion into the ventricles. Histopathology, clustering of small euchromatic and round to oval nuclei resembling those of sub ependymal glia. Microcysts and calcification are common, particularly in the lateral ventricular sub ependymomas. Rarely, nuclear pleomorphism and proliferative microabnormalities may be found. Mitotic activity and non pellucidic necrosis is rare. Some ependymomas may focally manifest perivascular pseudorosets. Mixed histologic pattern may be present, such as sub ependymoma, predominant neoplasms with nodules of classic ependymoma. The terminology is mixed ependymoma, sub ependymoma are also well recognized. Secondly, sub ependymoma with elements of fibrillary astroglial or rarely gemistocytic morphology may be found. Exceptionally rare. Melanotic pigmentation or sarcomatous change may be noted. Clerotic and ectatic blood vessels, hemorrhage and hemosiderin deposits are common. Coming to immunoprofile, uh, GFAP is diffusely strongly positive. Some exceptional cases may show olic positivity or even synaptophysin positivity. Clustering of focal dot like EMA positivity is noted. ATRX is retained. Now we need to rule out central neurocytoma in this case, which is uh, done uh, seen by synaptophysin and TTF and immunonegativity. And the proliferation index MIB1 is usually less than 1%. So, we rendered a diagnosis of sub ependymoma CNS WHO grade 1. Coming to diagnostic molecular pathology, sub ependymomas in the supratentorial, posterior fossa, and spinal cord have a distinct DNA methylation profile. Chromosome 19 loss and partial chromosome 6 loss is found in the infratentorial cases and TRIPS1 that is TRPS1 mutation is also found. Coming to prognosis, sub ependymomas exhibit excellent prognosis. Recurrence is rare even after subtotal resection. Cytological pleomorphism, occasional mitosis and necrosis have not proved prognostically significant. 
in tumors with mixed ependymoma sub ependymoma component behave aggressively depending on the histology of the uh, ependymoma however the study is going on and uh, we're just not sure whether to consider this point so take home message sub ependymoma is a glioma characterized by clustering of uniform to mildly pleomorphic tumor nuclei set in abundant fibrillary matrix prone to microcystic change you must know the grade it's cns who cns grade 1 on imaging these are sharply demarcated lobular non enhancing intraventricular masses commonly found in the fourth ventricle these are t1 hypo to iso intense and t2 hyper intense masses uh macroscopy these are firm gray white circumscribed masses which may bulge into the ventricles in the exophytic fashion cystic change and um, calcification is commonly found uh coming to microscopy these are clusters of small euchromatic round to oval nuclei set on the fibrillary matrix and mitotic activity microvascular proliferation necrosis is absent immuno profile is uh, gfap and ema positive and the ki61 index is less than 1% uh, molecular pathology distinct dna methylation profile uh, has been uh, found in the supratentorial infratentorial and the spinal cord subependymomas and the prognosis is excellent irrespective of uh, subtotal excision so thank you very much uh, if you have any queries you can uh, write a comment in the comment box or communicate to me on my email id thank you very much